Mars is Earth's closest planetary neighbor and the most Earth-like planet in the solar system. But so far, it has defied all of mankind's best efforts to penetrate its mystery. In spite of recent successes, a stark history of failure tends to dampen expectations. What caused the mysterious disappearance or outright failure of so many Soviet and American efforts to reach Mars? A Russian probe actually photographed a strange elliptical object above the surface of Mars just before disappearing into oblivion. Is someone or something working to prevent us from penetrating the puzzling enigma that is still wrapped around the red planet? Will a manned journey to Mars now planned for 2018 find a dead planet or remains of an ancient civilization? From the Viking missions in 1976 to the Mars Global Surveyor of 2001, there's ample confirmation that the Mars of today is not the Mars of yesteryear. But what will be the Mars of tomorrow? And will we be able to get there? Could it be that we are finally drawing closer to discovering what is really on Mars? Our leap into the cosmos begins in just a moment. One technological certainty of the beginning of this new millennium is that today, human beings of the planet Earth are a space-traveling species. And whatever doubt there may have been was erased in July of 1969 when the Eagle Lander settled into the primordial dust on the surface of the moon. Incredibly, just a few months prior to this epic event, a unique film debuted, 2001 A Space Odyssey a film which captured the imagination of the world with a prophetic vision of a hopeful future. But here we are. It is 2001. But there are no daily space shuttles to and from the moon, no grand wheeling space stations in low Earth orbit, and no colonies on Mars. After the spectacular success of landing a man on the moon, Mars seemed like the next logical step. It is, after all, our nearest planetary neighbor. And long before Neil Armstrong stepped off the ladder of the Eagle onto the surface of the moon, Earth scientists had begun struggling to solve the riddle of the red planet. Is there life there? Anything that could contribute to life? Are there intelligent artifacts, evidence of any kind of habitation? Even with an expanding space program, all of our best efforts met with failure after failure. In October of 1960, the Russians launched two spacecraft, neither of which even reached Earth orbit. They tried again in 1962. This time, the craft reached orbit, but died there. In November of the same year, the Soviets actually got Mars 1 on its way and proudly announced it would reach Mars in June of 1963. Ten weeks before it was scheduled to arrive, the Soviets lost all contact. After the problems the Russians had getting their probes to Mars, the American scientists started to joke among themselves about some great galactic ghoul that was uh, preventing our missions from getting there too. But in November of 1964, uh, the U.S. launched uh, the Mariner spacecraft. But as, as it approached Mars, Mariner 3's camera shroud failed to open, making the camera useless. The Soviets, seemingly unwilling to give up, launched another probe of their own in November of 64, called Zond-2. It also disappeared into the void of space. After five years and six tries, Earth scientists were no closer to Mars than their best telescopes. Missions to Mars were in fact meeting with an unusually high failure rate. Then in July of 1965, Mariner 4 finally brought success by completing the first flyby of Mars. Mariner 4 returned 22 images of the red planet back to Earth. Had Mariner 4 at last outwitted the galactic ghoul? Apparently not. When the Soviets then attempted to actually land a probe on Mars, something astonishing happened. Everything on the Mars probe seemed to be working just fine, and then it suddenly shut off. 
Could it be there was something out there, interfering with Earth's efforts to reach Mars? Or was it all just an incredible chain of coincidences? Completely overshadowed by the spectacular feat of landing a man on the moon, 1969 also saw two significant successes in the race to Mars. Mariner 6 and Mariner 7 both completed flybys, returning over 200 images of the planet's surface. And in 1971, NASA successfully put Mariner 9 in orbit around Mars. The great galactic ghoul, it seems, had been defeated. Or had it? The Soviets, still trying to regain leadership in the space race, announced that they were going to land on Mars. In 1971, they launched Mars 2 and Mars 3. Each of these probes carried a rover, a small remote-controlled vehicle designed to be deployed on the Martian surface after landing. Mars 2 flew into the teeth of a horrendous Martian dust storm and crashed. But Mars 3 landed and deployed its rover. The Russians can forever say they sent back the first pictures from the surface of Mars. But it was a short-lived triumph. Within two minutes, the rover transmitter went dead. The galactic ghoul was back in business. And in just a little over a decade, it would make itself felt with a vengeance. But in 1976, the American Viking program met with spectacular success. The probes began sending volumes of photographs back to Earth from their orbit above Mars, including these haunting images. Is it possible this was something we weren't supposed to see? Encouraged by the success of the Viking probe, the Soviet Union, with international cooperation, uh, launched a, a set of satellites in 1988. Phobos-1 never even made it to the planet. At some point along the journey, it just simply vanished. The 1988 Soviet probe uh, of Phobos-2, the uh, probe that was sent up to look at one of the moons of Mars, apparently encountered something very strange, of which the Soviets had a picture that did surface in the United States. It started to transmit some pictures of a large elliptical shadow, and then it too shut off, never to be heard from again. And five years later, the American space probe Mars Orbiter seems to have met the same fate. But what exactly did happen here? On March 26, Phobos 2 sent back images that showed a long elliptical shadow. These images, so far as the international team knew, were the last images sent by Phobos 2. But five months later, British television did a special on the Phobos mission, indicating there were other photographs the Russians had not released. These photographs, according to the report, showed an object which, in their words, should not have been there. Many researchers now believe the loss of so many Mars probes cannot be an accident. Could it be that there has been a deliberate attack by someone or something near Mars that, for whatever reason, does not want to be photographed? Has this bizarre string of space disasters occurred because we caught a glimpse of something that we were not supposed to see? Did the Viking space probe present us with a mystery that is unsolvable? Perhaps there is something in those photographs that will help us solve the Martian puzzle. Could it be that there are structures on Mars that are not the work of natural forces? Is the government and its agencies telling us everything we need to know and that we have a right to know? And why did NASA call its latest probe, 2001, a Mars Odyssey. Up until 1976, surface features of Mars had largely been the subject of conjecture. Some astronomers early in the 20th century supposed Mars was crisscrossed by a series of straight lines they called canals. And even as late as the mid-1950s, serious investigators manned telescopes in hopes of identifying large patches of green on the planet's surface. Alas, nothing of the sort could be seen. But in 1976, when the unmanned Viking space probe began sending back hundreds of images of the Martian surface, it appeared that at last the Martian mystery would be solved. Unexpectedly, the exact opposite was true. When the photographs being transmitted back to Earth began to be analyzed, this surface feature in an area of the planet designated Cydonia suddenly caught the attention of people the world over. Their original reaction was uh, 
uh, that it was a trick of chance sunlighting. Mars is certainly not capable of supporting life as we know it, intelligent life as we know it. So the idea of this being a creation of intelligence was uh, not even considered by NASA. Although when they first spotted the image, they labeled that frame head. Fortunately, that wasn't the end of the matter. Richard C. Hoagland, a former science advisor to both NBC and CBS, and a consultant to NASA and the Goddard Space Flight Center, among many other achievements, took a personal interest in the enigmatic object. During that process, Viking introduced us to the real Mars in the summer of 76. As the photographs came back from Mars and into the computers at JPL, and then to those of us gathered in JPL's auditorium to witness the first landing of an unmanned spacecraft on the planet Mars. One of those photographs showed a mile long, 1500 foot high mesa, shaped like a humanoid face. It simply did not belong. It cried out for explanation, if only for reassurance that it did not belong on Mars. Two image analysis experts, Vincent Di Pietro and Gregory Molinar, also found the Cydonia photograph captivating. They undertook the colossal task of discovering what the strange picture really showed. At, at first they just enlarged the photo and, and uh, considered there was nothing there at all. So uh, Vincent Di Pietro and I uh, designed a computer program to enhance the image uh, in much more detail than NASA had done. Even though their new program resulted in images as convincing as these, NASA apparently continued to insist that the image was nothing more than a trick of lighting. They said that Viking had photographed the same area from a different angle and that there was no face visible in the second photograph. Then we went through the archives to see if there was any other satellite passes over that same area. Uh, NASA said there wasn't at first and uh, we looked through their archives and found one. And there, just as before, there was a face with a higher sun angle showing more detail than before, even to the amount of showing teeth in the mouth and pupils in the eyes. We were very impressed. 